So in this video, I'm going to share how you can ethically spy on those people who are navigating through your website in order to make it the best possible user experience. So if you have any kind of footprint online in terms of a website, it's so important to understand how people are using your homepage and navigating through all of your different landing pages in order to actually serve them better and get better results from them and hopefully turn those visitors into customers. And you can get some really good information on how these people navigate through your website by using a tool called Hotjar. It's an online platform that simply tracks user behavior and shows you some good stats in order for you to improve your products and services. So to show you how I use Hotjar in my Kajabi account and my website, I'm gonna dive straight on over into my desktop. So here we are in Google and to navigate to this app, I would just put in Hotjar or Google to or navigate to hotjar.com. And like any kind of software as a service, it has a range of pricing options. So you can navigate to the pricing tab. And yes, there is a basic, which is $0. It's a free option. And then you can have scaling up from plus uh, to business, uh, ranging from $32 to $80, $171. Currently, I went through uh, not so long ago the, uh, the free trial. So I had a free trial and now I've just left it on the basic. And I'm actually gleaning some really good information of how users navigate through my website that I'm going to show you today but now I'm just remaining on the basics so if you don't want to spend any money this is another good free app I love free apps that you can actually add to your arsenal and then see how people are navigating through your website so I'm just going to jump on over into my hot jar and a few of the main things the free version gives you I'm just going to go across to heat map but before I go across to that once you open an account, and I probably recommend logging in with your Google address or something like that, it will give you a bit of header code. And if you are using Kajabi, if you're following any of my stuff online, um, or you can put this on any of your uh, header scripts, go into site details within your Kajabi account and scroll all the way down to uh, page scripts. And then in header page scripts, this is the Hotjar tracking code that I've simply added to my header page scripts. Now this will permeate across my entire platform. So anyone navigating through any of my pages, uh, yes, you, if you're looking on my pages, so you can ethically get some really good user experience data that you can actually make to improve changes on to your homepage and across your entire website. So I'm gonna go back into my Hotjar account. I've been tracking this uh, for a while now. If I go into heat maps, this is probably the biggest aha moment that I show all my clients and anyone that I work with is the scroll. So when people talk about the fold on any of your website pages, this, it gives you the average fold here. So it all depends on how you are navigating through somebody's website. Um, if you're surfing online, it's basically if you have a big uh, resolution screen, you're going to see a lot more of that page than if you're just navigating either on mobile or you're navigating through a desktop or a laptop. But this is the average fold. This means most of the people will see this page uh, above the fold so they don't have to scroll. So if I was to go to, so if I was to Google my homepage and then just click across to my, my homepage, as you can see, I'm navigating this on a, a laptop right now and everyone will see the majority of this section here. So if I go back to Hotjar, this is 100% scrolled this far. But as you scroll down, the colors change from reds to greens to blues. As you go all the way to the bottom, so it's actually 51% of people scrolled this far. So I always like to tell people when you actually put your, your message on your homepage and you want to call people to action, half of the people aren't gonna scroll to the bottom. So if your call to action, your only call to action was right down here at the bottom, half the people won't see it. So make sure you have a call to action or an opt-in somewhere above the fold on your website, that is best practice. And even better, if you can have it up into the top bar, that's gonna be there too. So that is a really sort of big aha moment that I like to show everyone. Not everyone is gonna scroll every page on your website. Another good thing that Hotjar allow you to do is to see where people are actually clicking on your website. So here, actually some people are trying to click on, on the main messaging here. People are actually clicking on the call to action button, which is great, that's where I want them to click. And then any of these links up here, they are clicking. 
Um, but the, mo the most people click on this button here. So if we go across the about page, that's if people actually want to learn a little bit more about me. And that makes sense. So if people discover me online, they want to know a little bit more about me, they'll click the about and then read about my story. Now, if you don't want that to be the case, you might want to put like a, a buy now button here, but I'm okay with people going through understanding a little bit more about me because I have a call to action on the foot or on the top of every single page. Because if I want to optimize my website, I either want to optimize it for sales to sell something or actually to generate leads. So it's to give something in exchange for somebody's email. So again, you can look down here and then you can see a lot of people are filling out this form here. So 50% of them won't actually get down this far, but of those that do, they're actually filling out this form. Some people have reached out to me by the contact me privacy in terms and then linking back to some of my, uh, my other socials. So if someone was to land on my homepage, scroll down and they're a big uh, LinkedIn uh, goer, they might just click on my LinkedIn profile to see um, what they can see. But here you can have a look again and you can see how people are moving through your website. So it's actually a bit of a heat map to show where people are moving. And then you can click on sort of any highlights and it will just show you where the highlighted areas are, where people are navigating to. So in addition to this type of heat map data, you can actually see uh, some recordings. So this is basically tracking how people uh, interact with your website. So you can drill down uh, into all of your recordings and you can actually get quite a bit of data to see how people interact with your website. If they're trying to click on something that's not a button, you might need to change that. It's how you lead people through different stages uh, of your homepage. So for example, uh, there's someone in the United States. Uh, if I click on how they interacted, uh, this is somebody signing up for one of my lead magnets. So every YouTube video I link to a squeeze page here, they will fill out their form and click submit. And then they've navigated back to my homepage. They're having a look at my free workshop. But so you can see how they scroll through your homepage. It's quite big brother, but it's an ethical way of getting some data, some user experience data. Because if they're trying to click on something that's not a button, you might want to change it up. But you should be leading them to where they want to go. So really dive deep into this and get an understanding of how like someone's looking at my privacy policy, my terms and conditions. Um, that's really interesting. Um, I wouldn't have thought that that would have been a, a big page that people would to go and have a look at, but you can actually get a lot of data on how people are interacting with your website, just so it's actually set up the way you want it to be and you're leading people the, the right way in terms of giving them some more information or offering them um, one of your services or your products to become a customer. So hopefully that makes sense to you. All it is is adding a bit of tracking code into your page scripts on whatever website service provider you're using. If you're using Kajabi, it's super simple. You just have to do it once, just how I showed you. And just remember, this is just a tool. This is a tool to make your services that much more attuned to your ideal customers and your audience and the people visiting your main website. And like I say, I currently use the free version of this. It gives me a lot of data. It gives me enough data for me to work from. And I do like to use free tools wherever possible. But I have actually scrutinized everything I use, paid and free tools. If you want to get your hands on a copy of my PDF checklist for all the tools that I use to run this online business, you can simply head to timpeatman.com forward slash tools and download your PDF guide today. It's a simple checklist. You can go through it to see which ones you could be or should be using. And it's the entire list of the tech stack of the tools that I use for this business. So hopefully that video has made sense and a quick overview of how you can use Hotjar and implement it into your website in order to give a better service, a better user experience, and ultimately to get more customers and more sales down the line. That link once more, timpeakman.com forward slash tools. Get your hands on my checklist and look forward to seeing you again on another video soon.